Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today called NG English. My name is John Drummond or Yang Haolin. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到我们新平方的节目 NG 英文。我是 Angela. We have a great show for you today with our good friend Lorenzo Perucci, who's known around the Taiwanese community as Lorenzo. 是的，我们今天真的非常幸运的邀请到了常年住在台湾的意大利摄影师 Lorenzo 来到我们的 N G 英文节目哦。那他除了会跟大家分享他的摄影人生以外呢，也会聊聊他一路走来啊学法文、学英文，还有学中文的心路历程。But before we get to the interview with Lorenzo and I, Angela is going to break down some of the cultural differences he spoke about in this episode of N G 英文 particularly about the difference in money and counting. When he was trying to negotiate a contract for Si Wan or Shi Wan, ooh, it's a tricky one. <laughs> so take it away, Angela, on NG English. 好的，没有问题，就让谢谢你的介绍。那没有错，今天我们就要来跟大家来聊一聊怎么用英文来正确表达数字，尤其是现在过年快到了，红包里面的数字可要讲对哦，长音、短音，多一个零、少一个零都差很多呢。那现在就请大家赶快把 NG cheat sheet 这个 NG 英文专属的笔记小抄准备好，我们要开始喽。那首先呢，在戴维的访谈中啊，大家有听到 Lorenzo 讲到说他有一次在跟客户谈生意，但因为中文数字这个十跟四的发音没有搞清楚，本来摄影费用应该是要跟人家收十万块，但是因为没有念好，对方以为是四万块，让他的收费整个大缩水哦。不过不是只有中文才会让人出这样的错，英文也会呢。像英文十几跟几十的发音，就常常会让人搞混。例如十三是 thirteen， 十四 fourteen， 一路到十九 nineteen， 都是以 teen 长音结尾哦。那二十 twenty， 三十 thirty， 一直到九十 ninety， 都是 t 结尾，比较短一点哦。很多时候，明明心里是在呐喊 thirteen， 是在念十三，可是嘴巴就不知道为什么会念成 thirty， 念成三十。特别是如果人家问你今年几岁，啊，你想要表达 thirteen years old， 但却讲成 thirty years old， 或是你明明是 thirty， 是三十，可是讲成 thirteen， 讲成十三岁，就可能会让自己陷入一个尴尬的窘境哦。或是你包红包啊，包了一千六，包这个 sixteen hundred， 但是因为没有念好，讲成 sixty hundred， 变成六千哦，不但会产生尴尬到不行的误会，有可能会造成不必要的麻烦哦。那或者有可能出现像 Lorenzo 遇到的状况，假设你某天在卖东西啊，然后你就跟客人说这个是 fifty dollars， 这个是五十块，可是没有念好，人家以为你是讲 fifteen dollars， 是讲十五块，那付钱的时候可能就会让双。分觉得说，哎啊，怎么跟刚才讲的价格不一样？所以啊，不管是哪国语言，我们一定要把数字学好，才不会让自己陷入窘境或是吃亏哦。那在进入今天的访谈之前，我们还是来复习一下刚刚的 teen 跟 t 的发音好了。十三到十九的话，我们都是 e 是长音的这个字哦，所以是 thirteen 十三 ，fourteen 十四 ，fifteen 十五 ，sixteen 十六。Seventeen, 十七 eighteen, 十八 nineteen, 十九。好，那接下来我们再来复习几十 t 发音比较短的结尾。二十 twenty， 三十 thirty， 四十 forty， 五十 fifty， 六十 sixty， 七十 seventy， 八十 eighty， 九十。哎，没有错，是 ninety。好啦，那希望刚才讲的这些对你的英文学习之路有所帮助。如果有漏掉、没有听到或是写下来的，也不用担心啦，可以上我们的 YouTube 频道，随时你想要听几次就给他听几次。那如果大家都已经准备好了的话，我们就赶快进入今天的访谈内容，听听 Lorenzo 他的分享吧。As always, thank you, Miss Angela Ma, for that wonderful NG English breakdown. It reminds me of a little tongue twister in Chinese. The 四十四十四十四 ooh, the tones are so important and so beautiful. So thank you for that. Today on the show, we are joined by an Italian photographer, entrepreneur, part-time model, and actor because he's so handsome and so much more. So everyone, please welcome my good friend Lorenzo, my man. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. 
Thank you for uh, for coming in. So you have been traveling the world. Every time I look at your life via social media, you are in a new country. So where did you just get back from? 访谈开始呢，主持人这样讲到说啊，哇，他每次看 Lorenzo 的 IG， 都觉得他在环游世界，在到处爬爬走。那他最近又是从哪里回来了嘞？不过相信大家都知道，说网络社群上面东西啊，我们看看就好。而且 Lorenzo 有讲到说 ，Never trust social media， 不要相信社群媒体。但是嘞，他也想到说，他确实之前人是在海外，因为摄影工作关系，他常常要到各地去取景。那那时候嘞，刚好在巴厘岛完成拍摄工作，后来就去了一趟 Palau， 去了一趟这个柏流，好、哦，在那边休息几天。那我们现在就赶快来听听 Lorenzo 摄影大师分享他的故事吧。呃、uh, ，Well, first of all, never trust social media. Uh, the last place I've been, I think, was in Palau. Palau, But yeah. yeah, I was just taking a break because I was shooting in Bali before, which you know I go there quite often, and mostly shooting and traveling, as you see. Yeah, I love that. First of all, don't trust social media. Good, good words of advice right there. I'm gonna have to put that in the advice section later as well. But yeah, man. So you have really developed your photography life and kind of your career over the past ten years. So what is the What is the focus now of 2020 for your work? 接下来我们要来问问 Lorenzo， 他在新的一年在二零二零有没有什么新计划，或是想要更专注在工作的哪方面上嘞 ？Lorenzo 说，其实二零二零年对他来讲是一个很重要的一年哦，因为他是在十年前二零一零年的时候来到台湾的，而且那时候他才刚开始当摄影师。他说他主要的拍摄主题有很多，有时候是 underwater 在水底下进行拍摄，有时候呢又会去找巴厘岛的别墅。但可能前一天才在拍夜店里面的 party， 所以当他在建立个人网站的时候，其实很难决定他要走的是什么样的风格，或是想要成为哪一种摄影师。因此嘞 ，Lorenzo 他的新年目标是要给自己设一个这个 project， 一个计划哈。什么计划嘞？就是要统整过去他所有的作品，从里面嘞去找每张照片的 connection， 找他们的这个关联性，来帮助他自己定位，找出他的摄影风格。他说他在年底的时候有大概看过了以前拍的照片，发现他拍摄的主要都是在台湾，甚至是亚洲各地里面夜店的场景诶，而且几乎都是夜店里面的人。那每个人都有不一样的故事、不一样的背景啊，有各种不同来到夜店 party 的原因，让 Lorenzo 就决定说，哎，在新的一年他来慢慢回顾、整理这些照片。说不定他未来会出一个 body of work， 一个这个作品集，或是甚至开一个 exhibition， 一个摄影展，来让大家欣赏他的作品。Well, I mean, 2020 for me is kind of a particular year because it's like 10 years now that I'm here in Taiwan. It's like for me 10 years that I'm a photographer because I actually start to be a photographer when I come here in Taiwan. So what I What is the point about me is like I shoot so many things that you know I can be one day shooting underwater and the day after I'm shooting a, a villa in Bali and then before I was shooting like a club or event. So when I was trying to do my new website, I was quite at this problem. I don't know which kind of photographer, which kind of project I can put on it. So now, because we are this 2020, I try to come up with the idea of make actually a project, kind of a retrospective of all the work I did. And、uh, years ago, I was、um, at a lake exhibition where there was a Manyan photographer, and asking a suggestion what I should do. And he say the most important things is like you use your connection to do a personal project that only you can do. And I was trying to thinking which kind of Connection or which kind of project I can do, but then I look back at my last ten years and I shoot club and event like all over Taiwan, actually all over Asia. And looking back at the picture, not only I notice the picture that the clients want, where the club looks amazing, a lot of girls, and good vibes, but I have a huge amount of photos of people at the event. And in a club, as you know, there is a lot of different people, a lot of different story. Every picture is kind of like a a painting with all these stories. So I'm now trying to taking my time from the work and、uh, spending time go through all these pictures, try to put together a body of work, and maybe one day it's gonna be an exhibition or a book or something like that. Yeah, beautiful. So that's kind of actually what I wanted to ask you. Do you feel? That body of work that you've done over the past ten years, you could turn it into kind of an exhibit or exhibition or or a book. 
Have you thought kind of what direction you want to go with that? 在这段访谈中呢 ，Lorenzo 聊到啊，出一本摄影集或是开摄影展，大概是专业摄影师都会想要做的事吧。尤其是这几年来啊，越来越多人可以当摄影师，很多公司都用便宜的价格来请人家当摄影，让摄影师的整体价值都降低了。所以他觉得未来如果可以办一场摄影展，或是出一本摄影集，会让他在众多摄影师里面嘞脱颖而出，对他的事业会有很大的帮助，会 put him in a better position。而且最主要嘞，也可以让他自己更了解自己本身的拍摄风格。Well, let's say that's kind of a natural, natural develop for a photographer, especially like nowadays.、Uh, I think photography is 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 a very good time and a very strange time for photography because Now is very can be very cheap. There are many companies out there that they pay very little for works, but it's also not something for some exclusive people. But everybody do photography every day, and everybody need photography every day.、Mm -hmm. So is probably the I believe the most important media that we have nowadays. The point is like I was look back at my work and I see that I have all these huge amount of photograph that are taking more than ten years actually and. I decided to try to put these things all together in a probably exhibition or、mm -hmm. a book. It would be a good idea to try to put me in a better position,、uh, mostly to look back at what I did and then、uh, have myself an idea of what I did with all this work in these years. Yeah, man, I I think that's beautiful. This to sum that up, you're kind of saying, you know, everyone is a photographer these days with phones and social media, like we spoke about earlier, and this gives you a chance to kind of. Get ahead of that to bridge more of your creativity to kind of your incredible, incredible work, my friend. By the way, but、Thank、yeah, you, I think this will be a great showcase for you for all of that. So backing up then a little bit, your life in Taiwan actually brought you some new language, and would you say your English and your Chinese and French maybe and Italian all developed more here in Asia? 如果本身就有在关注我们这位摄影大师 Lorenzo 的听众朋友，你一定知道他很不简单，会四国语言。除了本身的母语意大利文，跟现在我们听到的英文以外嘞，他还会中文跟法文哦。所以接下来主持人要来问问他，身在海外，在亚洲的这些年，有没有让他的外语能力又更上一层楼了嘞？那 Lorenzo 说啊，英文和中文是有进步啦，但是法文跟意大利文就肯定没有，毕竟在亚洲啊，跟这些欧系语言不太有关系。那他待会会分享到说，其实自己蛮幸运的、哦，因为他的爸爸以前要求他学的外语是法文，不是英文，因为他觉得 eventually 最后呢 ，Lorenzo 他自己一定会学英文，所以要他先把法文学起来，不用急着把英文学好。啊，结果还真的被他爸爸说中了。当初一开始来台湾的时候，语言中心的同学都忙着在学中文，就他一个为了要 survive 要生存，要跟人家沟通，被迫被 forced 要把英文学起来。而且最后毕竟住在台湾，他也就一起把中文学起来了。Well, I can say that definitely English and Chinese, but for sure not Italian and French are developed here in Taiwan.、Uh, well, I've been quite lucky, I'll say, because.、Um, My father pushed me to study French when I was uh, back in uh, uh, junior high, and he will say that you will eventually learn English yourself. And that's actually what happened because when I moved in Taiwan, when、um, I was a student in NCCU, most of the other students they were、uh, worried about learning Chinese and learning Mandarin. But my first concern was to learn English because my English was really the book is on the table and open the window. That was the level. <laughs> And which is normal for Italian because if you go to Italy, there is not many people speaking English. So definitely, moving here has forced me to figure out how to speak English just to survive. And then eventually, I had to also get along with the Chinese, which is totally a game changer when you live in this country. Yeah, absolutely. Because I think about now all the contracts you're doing, all the business meetings you're holding to get these new clients. You probably are doing that mostly in Chinese now. 在这段访谈中，我们要来问问 Lorenzo， 在台湾当摄影师，跟客户开会讨论摄影细节啦、费用、合约等等的时候，是不是都是用中文啊？他说，能够用当地语言来沟通，或是在一开始就让对方知道说你听得懂他们在说什么，是很基本的。大家等一下会听到他讲这个字。Absolutely fundamental， 就是非常非常基本的，而且也会有很大的不同。
他举例说，像如果要去一个比较盛大的场合拍摄，员工通常几乎都不会说英文，所以背后付钱的那个老板嘞，也就是摄影师的 client， 他的客户，一般就比较不会信任那些不会说当地语言的摄影师。而且再说啦，如果你会讲当地的语言，那些跟你一起拍摄的其他摄影员工也会对你比较友好一点，你也比较可以感受到当地人的热情哦。那在这段最后，主持人 John 也讲到说，好像一般在签了合约在进行拍摄的时候，客户应该都不会在身边，都是其他摄影团队的员工在和你一起摄影吧。但是 Lorenzo 说，如果真的是这样子就太好了，那些客户其实很多时候都跟得超紧哦，像直升机一样紧紧的跟在身边环绕。那我们话不多说，直接来听听这段精彩的分享吧。There is a huge difference when you're in a meeting and you can speak the language, or just even make it clear from the beginning that you can understand what they're saying. That is a absolutely like fundamental. So the point is like when you do a bigger event or like you know a big production, what's going to happen? Like the staff mostly surely they will not speak English at all. So the client will never trust a photographer that cannot speak the language on the staff. And even when you work with the staff, they're gonna be totally different to you. Because it's much warmer, much nicer to have somebody that you know can talk the language, can interact with them. Yeah, I I think that's absolutely right. And because you're not once you get the the contract and the deal, you're not really working with that person as much. You're on the ground, you're at the event, working with the staff, like you're saying. Well,、yeah. I wish this is true, but many times the clients are really <laughs> really close to you. <laughs> They just hover over yeah, you, which、exactly. as a creative person, I'm sure you absolutely love, love that. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs> So, with all your language knowledge that you have over the years, can you share with our listeners here on NG Ingwen any tips or advice? 接下来我们要来问问 Lorenzo， 他在学了这么多语言之后，有没有什么小 paper 可以跟听众朋友们分享嘞？他说他有个孩子 ，I have a kid， 什么意思啊？这 paper 也太怪了吧？其实也没有很奇怪啦，就像我们其他来宾曾经讲过的。这个说当地语言的男女朋友，其实对语言学习有很大的帮助，是一样的意思啦。他说他有一个九岁的女儿，常常在家，他们都是用英文来沟通。但是因为他在学校每天都有学中文啊，所以他们也几乎都会用中文来跟对方讲话。他开玩笑说，这一方面来讲是好的啦，可以练习中文。但是另一方面呢，让他讲中文的时候，他的遣词用字都听起来像是一个小孩。那另外，他也有提到说啊，我们必须要 totally committed， 要全心全意的把自己的心房打开，对你在学的语言真的去投入时间精力哦。像他之前就帮这个 Airbnb 拍照，会去台东啊，去花莲。那那时候他的中文没有很溜，只会说简单的自我介绍。可是对方一听到 Lorenzo 用中文在自我介绍，就很开心啊，就跟他聊了很多，只是他都听不懂。不过嘞，虽然听不懂。但他有勇敢开口，有 show interest， 让对方知道说，哎，他有这个心，要用人家熟悉的语言来交流，而且他对他自己也有一个交代，有在把握机会练习。Oh,、uh, well, have a kid. <laughs> That's the best advice. Oh man, so I've heard. Yeah, the funniest ones are the direct answers. Have a kid or have a boyfriend or girlfriend. I hear all the time as well. Exactly. I think a kid is a more creative.、Uh, well, the point is like this. My, as you know, I have a beautiful daughter. And、uh, I should speak Italian to her, but of course, when you have like a nine years old daughter, is and you want to things get done, you for sure want to talk to her. You know something that she understand without spending too much time to talking what I just said. So、um, me and her, we mostly speak English in the house, but she learn a school Chinese every day. So on the time we were always day by day start to talk in Chinese, Chinese. Which is great in some ways, but actually it's kind of funny because he started talking Chinese like at four years old, <laughs> which is not amazing. <laughs> And another thing that I suggest is like to be totally committed to just open yourself. Back in the days, I was、uh, shooting for Airbnb when it was just starting. And、uh, I was the only photographer, so I was shipped to Hualien or Taidong and all these amazing places. Where the, and I was starting really like Ni Hao, was the nigga saying so, and that's it. And then they start to talk to me for hours, and I have no idea what's going on.、Uh, but if you go there and show that you are interested, and you just try, that's the point that maybe sometimes people don't do. Just try to speak. Then it actually works very well. Yeah, I th- I think just like you said that I mean obviously having a daughter has has probably improved your Chinese even though it sounds like it's elementary level with her. But at the same time, you know you're getting so much exposure daily because she's probably trying to explain things to you. 
And then, yeah, giving that commitment. And that's such an important thing, you know, showing the interest in what you're doing with your work and just, you know, being polite. And I think that goes a long way in helping you be as successful as you are because you are such a great guy to be around. So thinking then about all your languages even more, I'd love to ask a question about cultural differences here on the show. Mm -hmm. So do you remember kind of any situations with English or Chinese or Italian that kind of gave you confusion or, or were funny? 在这段访谈里嘞，我们要来问问 Lorenzo， 他有没有遇过什么样的文化差异，或是在中文啊、英文跟意大利文之间遇过比较有趣的状况嘞？他说他有一次在跟客户开会啊，啊，已经差不多在 closing the deal， 就是差不多要谈成一个生意了，已经在谈价格了。那当时 Lorenzo 他价格开十万块。没想到课文却很开心，觉得 OK OK 没问题没问题，让 Lorenzo 觉得有点奇怪，蛮意外的。整个过程就很顺利这样子，一直到后来啊，拍摄结束，事情都忙完了，要收钱了，结果客户只付了四万块，让他傻眼，还以为是付定金这个 deposit 是这样子吗？最后才知道说，原来当时客户以为他说的是四万块，不是十万块。罗仁手说啊，这中文数字的“四”的发音对他来讲根本就是一个 mystery， 一个谜哦，每次都分不清楚。听众朋友们，就像我们前面在 NG 英文里面讲到的，不管是什么语言，谈到钱啊，还是要把数字学好比较重要。Well, I mean, if you're talking about confusion, it's like confusing every day for me because my Chinese is not nothing close to yours or many other of my friends. A funny situation. Well, there was these times I will never forget. I was um. I was in a meeting with a client. We were trying to close in a deal for a simple photo shooting, but I was want to get kind of a fair price, so I was prepare my quote and everything. And so I was hemming to this Shuang、uh, Kui number, which is for me was、uh, my start of my career, so it was my epic number.、Mm-hmm. And incredible, the client was super happy about that and was keep smiling and say yes and yes and was going everything very well. <laughs> Only after what、well, the shooting was done, the picture was delivery, and I just see the, you know, the what I thought was the deposit arriving,、uh, nothing else coming up. Oh, the point was the client for the I would say, sh, s,、uh-huh. which is not sh. Right. So you were hearing s, s one like forty thousand. Yes. But you were saying sh. Exactly. Oh, you're trying to say a hundred thousand. The problem for me is like four, ten, and that they all sound the same. Yeah. And in Ch- in Chinese, I think there is like hundred or hundred of words like this, and、uh, the four accent for me are just a mystery. <laughs> so I just、uh, whenever a word is in a context, I try to figure it out more or less which of the five word was and try to go for that. Amazing! Wow,、yeah. I'm I'm I would like to crack open your brain and look into how much it's trying to work when you're trying to figure out what people are saying. That's amazing. But yeah, you know, hearing the tones, it's it's so important in the language as w- as we know. And and yeah, I've dealt with a, a similar situation where I heard I heard ten, but the guy was saying four, and I ended up. Crying myself to sleep that night. <laughs> Beautiful story, bro. All right, my man. Well, we have come to our last question here on ICRT, and I want to know. Actually, I usually ask you to go back in time and kind of give yourself advice. But since you have an eight-year-old daughter, is there any advice you could give her as she is beginning to learn all these new languages? 那访谈最后，相信各位听众朋友们都知道，我们会来问问来宾，如果可以回到过去跟小时候的自己说说话，会想要跟自己说些什么建议哦。但是今天比较特别，既然 Lorenzo 有个女儿，我们就要来问问她，有没有什么建议会想要给在学外国语言的女儿嘞？她说，就像当初她的爸爸给她的建议一样，学越多语言越好。他说：“因为从他在各国工作、跟不同团队合作的经验里面发现呢、啊，不管你在团队里面的地位、你的职位是什么，如果你会多国语言，可以跟不同国家人沟通、传达讯息，那你才是最重要的。”那我们赶快听听访谈最后这段分享吧。Well, I think she for sure gonna have an easier life with me because she's already bilingual for sure. But、um, I would like to do what my father did for me. Was the idea to study French because eventually English I will learn. So the point is just just to learn as much language as possible. It's just like something that every day make a incredible difference. I work in many different country, 
and in many countries I cannot speak the language. And if there is one guy that is in the group that can speak the language, even if it's not the most important one in the group, at the end during the shooting is the one that's gonna have the extra gear because he's the one that get the things done. Wow, that's actually really important. So you're saying kind of it could be an intern or could be a young staff member, but if they speak multiple languages, the they, they get all the respect. Yeah. That's absolutely great advice, man. I really I really appreciate you sharing that. All right, dude. Well, I really hope people can uh, actually go find your website and some of your social media because your photos are breathtaking. Um, so can you share a little bit maybe where people can find your photos? Well, there's good luck with that because it's my name. So it's Lorenzo <laughs> Pierucci. Lorenzo Perucci. It's not like that, but okay. Okay, you know me. I always <laughs> try to roll the R's way too much. Uh, but yeah, you can look for Lorenzo Pierucci both in Instagram and there's also my website. And Perfect. Let's. Uh, how do we spell Perucci? Oh, it's going to be difficult. Uh, P-I-R-U-C-C-I. P-I-R-U-C-C-I. Yeah. I don't Lorenzo. think there are many Taiwan of Pierucci, so true yeah, true. If you just search Lorenzo P, you might you might find it. Uh probably, I guess. Yeah. Thank you so much, and happy New Year to you, dude. Hey, good, you to, too, man. good to see you back in the country. Well, let's hope to meet more. Actually. Yeah, I know we've got some surfing, surfing photos. And and yeah. exactly. <laughs> All right, brother. I'll talk to you next time. All right. Much cheers. love. All righty. That is our NG Ingwin show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. Don't forget to connect with us on Instagram or Facebook. You can search NG Ingwen or you can search NG English ICRT. And make sure to tune in each week, Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7 and Wednesday night from 9 to 9.30. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 好，那我们今天新平方的节目 NG 英文就到这边告一段落啦。感谢大家的收听，别忘了到 IG 搜寻我们的粉丝专业 NG 底线。English 在底线 ，I C R T。那大家也要记得每周三早上六点半到七点，或是晚上九点到九点半，把广播调到 I C R T 频道 F M 一百， FM100, 准时收听我们节目哦。那也欢迎大家上网搜寻西平方的公器不备课程，或者是呢到我们西平方的官网，多读读一些有关 N G 英文的专栏文章，看看在 N G 英文里面的专栏有没有哪些是大家可以吸收学起来的一些小 p e o p l e 哦。我们下次见了，拜拜。